Hello everyone, welcome back. So you can see I'm playing Destiny the Taken King, and today I'm going to be showing you the new subclass for the Warlock, which is still my favorite class. It has been since day one. And this new subclass, my god, is it good. <laughs> so we'll get into that right away, and as you can see, I'm orbiting Saturn right now, which is the new planet added to the roster. You see down here is the Dreadnought. You can't explore the surface just yet, but you can see some lightning, which might suggest some Vex presence. So who knows what's going on beneath the surface there. But yeah, yours actually takes place right here on the Dreadnought. So let's go ahead and get this going. Now as you can see, let's just look at that Warlock for a second. That is one sweet looking Warlock right there. The gear looks absolutely fantastic for the Warlock in this expansion. But sadly, I have a higher level gear right here, which also looks pretty cool. As you'll see, I put it on right there. It has some feathers on it. But yeah, I really want to find one that's made by the same one as this right here, the Seraph, which is actually what's cool now with the new light levels, which I should probably go into before going into the actual subclass, is that you see my light level is 257. Well, that sounds crazy if you got done with the most recent expansions. So as you see right here, the level is 40. Now this is your actual level, because before it was your light level. You would reach level 20, and then it would stop, and then whatever gear you were wearing would bring you up to... 32 in the dark below and then 34 in the house of wolves, but they completely scrapped that which I am glad and now literally any piece of armor as you see right here where it says 254 261 254 234 as you can see you have new ghost shells now and then you also have a new item called the artifact But every single one of these contributes to your light score So if you have a good gun if you have a good ghost shell artifact bond which is a warlock class item it all contributes to your level. And I think the level cap right now is around, I think it's like 300 light. I'm not exactly sure, but, so that's a good thing to go over because it's kind of complicated if you're just now starting out in Destiny. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on to the Stormcaller, which this is an extremely powerful class, I will say. I really don't like using Voidwalker because the ability is kind of a one-shot. My favorite subclass still is the Sunsinger because you can activate it and throw grenades, use Scorch, your melee attack and all that. So this Stormcaller is a good mix between the two because it has an extremely powerful effect and it can be used more than once. So it is just absolutely devastating. I think it is the most powerful subclass right now. I haven't played as the Titan or Hunter yet and the Hunter seems really good at suppressing abilities and enemies. And the Titan is really good at being able to throw that hammer but man this can just... I've destroyed an entire team of six people in about three seconds with this ability. So it is definitely a force to be reckoned with. But let's go ahead and go over some of the abilities here. Now here you have the Pulse Grenade. If you've played as the Striker as the Titan, you'll know exactly what this one is. So it's not exactly a new grenade. A grenade that periodically damages enemies inside its explosive radius. So as you can see in the video, if you've already played as the Titan, that's exactly what you're getting into. And now here you have the Storm Grenade, which is a brand new grenade. A grenade that calls down a focused lightning storm. It brings down one big bolt and then I think like five other ones that are randomly scattered around it. You'll see it in the video, it is pretty devastating. And it can be used indoors too, it's not like the lightning will hit a surface above it. Whatever surface that grenade lands on, that's where the lightning hits. So if you have an area above you, it'll just warp right past that and hit the floor that you're trying to get it to hit. And here, you have the Arc Bolt Grenade, a grenade that chains bolts of lightning to nearby enemies. Now if you've played as the Blade Dancer for the Hunter, you've already used this grenade. As you can see in the video, it works the exact same way. It's pretty good. It's probably the second best one that the Stormcaller has. I still use the Storm Grenade though because it is, just as the video shows, it is incredibly fun to use and powerful. And here you have the Glide, which is the double jump for the Warlock. Jump and then press A again while in the air to activate Glide. Now the good thing about this one for the Warlock, if you haven't played him before, is that you don't boost as high as the Titan, but you do hover a lot longer. And it's actually, if you're dropping straight down and you activate it, you'll stop mid-air and then start hovering. You can't really do that with the Titan. The Titan will kind of, it'll slow you down, but it won't stop you in mid-air. This one will. And then down here, you have different versions of it. You have the Focus Control, Upgrade Glide for better directional control while in the air. Focus Burst, Upgrades Glide to provide an initial boost of speed, which is pretty good. It's the one that I would use until you unlock this one which is Upgrades Glide to provide bonuses to both speed and control. Now, it doesn't give you as much as these two do, but it's kind of like a middle ground between them. Also, I'd like to mention, the other Warlock video I made got a lot of praise to it, but the one complaint they had is that I didn't upgrade my character all the way. So I went ahead and avoided that and grinded my way through unlocking everything. So now I can definitely show off everything that you can do and not just guess. So here you have Thunderstrike, 
deliver an electrocuting arc melee strike at extended range. As you can see in the video, it's kind of like the one with the flame. I can't remember what it's called. But it has a cool little animation on it where he shoots out both hands like Emperor Palpatine and just smashes the enemies. And the one that I use with it is right here. Chain Lightning, your Thunderstrike chains to another nearby enemy. Which is extremely effective. Especially if you have it comboed with another one that I'm going to show in a second. Then you have Amplitude, your Thunderstrike has greater range. That one's decent, but it's definitely not as good as being able to chain it and cause more damage. Then over here you have Hits with Thunderstrike, Charge is your super ability, and Melee Charge. So that's pretty good, but it doesn't really charge it that quickly. So still chaining it will definitely get you through more conflicts. This one's kind of situational. Then over here you have just standard training, Battle Recovery and Speed, Battle Recovery and Toughness. You have Toughness and Speed, Toughness at All Costs, then you have Raw Speed, All Attributes. So yeah, it's all just based on the way you want to play. I personally have it as a lot of armor, decent amount of recovery, and then some agility. <laughs> I don't really need to be speeding around those battlefields. Then over here you have Pulse Wave. When critically wounded, trigger a Pulse Wave that boosts speed for you and your allies. Now that one's only good if you're playing with people, obviously. <laughs> if you're playing by yourself, there's really no point in using that. Unless you're trying to, I don't know, get through an area quickly. <laughs> Not really sure why you would want to use that by yourself. Or if you're trying to use an exploit where you need to get some more speed like the Crota Raid. Then down here you have Feedback. This is the one that I was talking about. Incoming melee attacks fully recharge and intensify your Thunderstrike, which chained with Chain Lightning, it is extremely effective. So you basically use Chain Lightning and then somebody hits you. There is a little bit of cooldown by the way. I think it's like four seconds or two seconds. It's somewhere in there. And then have someone hit you, use it again. <laughs> Wait about four seconds, have someone hit you, use it again. It's really good for clearing out a lot of weak enemies. Or if you're trying to take down a bigger enemy, you just kind of let one of the weak ones punch you. Because typically you don't want the big dude punching you. Might kill you. And over here you have Electrostatic Mind. Storm Trance charges faster when your allies are near. When Storm Trance is active, nearby enemies take damage. Now that one's actually really good. And especially if you're playing with people, but even by yourself it's a really good effect. Again, with crowd control you can just take down a lot of enemies with that. It has like a pulsing effect where it just constantly damages people around you. Now I do have this one better though, that's why I have it equipped. Enemies damaged by your grenades chain deadly lightning to nearby enemies. So that one chained with the storm grenade that I have on there. You can hit a lot of people because that storm grenade can already hit like seven or eight people. It really, it's... It can hit as many people as it wants, but just range-based, I would put it around to 7 or 8. So yeah, really good effect, and a really good grenade to chain it to. So yeah, you can get some crazy combos with the Storm Color. Then here you have Perpetual Charge. Grenade kills, recharge your melee. Melee kills, recharge your grenade. That's a decent effect, but I don't really use grenades in melee that much. Typically melee, I only use it for this, and grenades, you kind of want to get it in a bursted area. It is a good effect, though. If you do use a lot of melee and grenades... Although, these other two are really good. I guess it all just depends on playstyle. But yeah, there's a lot of good ones to choose from. If you choose any of these trees, you're really not going wrong. There's a lot of good combos you can do. And as you can see, some of these actually affect your stats. Like you'll see right here, if you do this one, you lose some armor. And then if you add this one, you gain some agility. Because as you'll see right here, this actually gives you armor if you use feedback. So it's really good at balancing itself out. Now let's go on to the main event, which is the Storm Trance. <laughs> Chain Arc Lightning from your hands. Now this, as I was saying earlier, is absolutely devastating. <laughs> as I said, you can take down an entire team very quickly because the lightning chains between them. And I think a focus beam takes like a half a second or a second to kill a player. And that's a player in the Crucible. <laughs> Typically, you don't kill them that quickly. And this super actually lasts a pretty damn long time. You can have it going for, I think, 10 seconds? And in that time, you can just absolutely wreck shop. It's probably, I think it's even higher than Blade Dancer as far as killing people. They might have to nerf it in the future. <laughs> I mean, it is crazy powerful. And then you have its effects down here, Landfall. On casting Storm Trance, fire a bolt of lightning into the ground, creating a devastating shockwave under you. Now this one activates whether you're on the ground or in the air. But it's fun to jump in the air and have a lightning bolt just go slamming down. Because I think it actually will drop as far down as the map goes. So you can jump off something that's like 200 feet and have a lightning bolt go hit the ground below you. So it's definitely fun to get some skill shots out of that. And I actually have a pair of exotic gauntlets 
where it gives you landfall. So I usually use this one down here, Ionic Blink, and then I have landfall already on there. So if you have that exotic gauntlet, it is really good. Then over here you have Superconductor. Doubles your Storm Trance Lightning's chaining capabilities. Now I couldn't really find a place to show this. You would probably have to find a mission where it has like 12 or 16 people in the same room. Because I think your Storm Trance chains to about 3 people, so if it doubles it, it goes up to 6. Now that is crazy. <laughs> As I was saying before, with how easily you can take down a team, if all six of them are standing right there, you just hit one person, kills the whole room. So if you see somebody with Storm Trance active in the multiplayer, just run. It's not even worth it. <laughs> Don't go anywhere near them. There is a range limit to the lightning. I think it's like 10, 15, 20 feet, which is not very far, but it's also pretty close, too. It's further than you think when you see it coming at you. You're going to think, oh, well, he's too far away, and then you dead in a second <laughs> but yeah the good thing is though with the hunter is their bow ability actually cuts out all supers so if you see somebody using their storm trance you can use that bow and shoot them bam super's gone <laughs> so that's actually really cool i can't wait to play as that and i actually saw some hunters rolling around too which is unusual it looks very cool and then down here you have ionic blink which is easily the best out of all three of these press left stick to teleport during storm trance now, as you can see in the video, you can warp around like crazy all over the map. And it actually, it drains a little bit of your super, so watch out when you use it, but it's incredibly effective. If you see a rocket coming at you, you can boost out of the way, or if you're fighting a boss and you want to get behind them, just boom, teleport right behind them. Which is really good for that tank where it has to slowly turn around to shoot at you. All you have to do with this is just keep warping around them and attacking with your lightning. Speaking of which, you also have this one over here, which is Transcendence. When cast with full grenade and melee energy, Storm Trance restores your health to full and drains slower. Now, it drains quite a bit slower. I think it's like a full 5 or 10 seconds. If you watch the little clip in the corner, you can see it draining pretty slowly. I was able to go pretty much halfway across that map. So yeah, it is effective. It is really good. But again, as I was saying, Ionic Blink will actually drain it a little. So make sure you're a little conservative with those blinks. But yeah, that's really all there is to show with the Storm Color. Now... If you would want to use this in PvE or PvP, I would probably say PvP is the best place to use this. Because with the Ionic Blink mixed with this Transcendence over here, if you're almost dead, you can just boom, activate Storm Trance, and then just kind of warp around and just take down the entire team. Because people, the expansion's pretty new right now, so people aren't really expecting you to go warping behind them. And as you can see, it's omnidirectional. You can warp in front of you, behind you, diagonally to the back of you. You can go in any direction that you click the stick. You can even go up in the air. I think if you just click it without moving it, you just warp straight in the air. So yeah, this is an extremely effective class. And even in PvE, taking down bosses with the Storm Trance is really, really good. You don't want to get too close now, because a lot of bosses have some pretty powerful melee attacks. So yeah, keep your distance. I would definitely say to do that. But yeah, so... That is the Stormcaller class. Now, to show you what this new expansion, what everything looks like, and I just have quests and everything, if you're thinking about getting this expansion, absolutely do it. It's $40, but it adds more content than the base game came with, and that is saying a lot. See, right here, it already has a new strike. This is the Dreadnought, by the way. Another new strike here. You got a new raid, King's Fall. Haven't been able to play that yet, because as you can see, the light level is very high for that. There's a new patrol zone here. You got some missions. And the, down here you can see this thing called Calcified Fragments. Those are kind of like ghosts, but they're very well hidden. And this whole Dreadnought actually is really fun to explore. I'm definitely going to come back and show some videos on this. Because it is a fun place to go to. As you can see, it's in Saturn. Which finally confirms that Saturn is going to be a place you can visit in the future. They are really going to have to expand this map though, by the way. Because as you can see right here, it says Solar System, Milky Way Galaxy, Local Group. That means that eventually they're going to go out of the Milky Way galaxy and possibly out of the solar system as well. So Destiny in the next 10 years is probably going to be gigantic. There's probably going to be about like 50 patrol zones and planets you can go to. So yeah, I definitely cannot wait for that. As much as Bungie tries to say it's not an MMO, it plays like one, feels like one, you level like one, so kind of is. <laughs> and they have expansions coming out, which add to the content. It's an MMO. So anyway, that is the video there. Just some new stuff showing off. But yeah, I will be back with the Titan and the Hunter, which I actually, my Titan and Hunter, I haven't played 
since the Taken King came out, so I haven't even tried to upgrade them. And what's actually cool, when you get the new subclasses, there's a specific mission for your character. For the Warlock, you actually go to this spire where there's lightning everywhere on Mars, and you go, I guess, get struck by lightning, and then you turn into a storm caller. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what the Titan and the Hunter go to. I'm hoping the Titan goes to Mercury. <laughs> That'll give us another reason to go back to that planet. They already have two multiplayer maps in Mercury, and the new one in the Taken King is actually really fantastic. And then they have that uh, secret social space if you get the nine wins in the Trials of Osiris. But it's like, just come on, give us Mercury already. <laughs> you know it's right there, just do it. But yeah, so that was the storm color for the Warlock, and my next video will probably be exploring the Dreadnought, and then after that will be the Titan, and then maybe another video having to do with... There's actually a really cool strike, by the way. It's on the Dreadnought. It has the most unique boss fight I have seen in this entire game. It's pretty much like an up-close and personal boss fight in pitch black. <laughs> so it's pretty frightening. He's just walking around with a giant sword, and he appears out of nowhere and tries to slash you. It's like a survival horror thing. <laughs> But anyway, I'll be back with those. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you then.